Hello, welcome to our 2130 Partners Operating Principal video series. I'm Suzanne Mayo, Friend Principal of 2130 Partners, a leadership development and education firm, and co-author of our book, Accelerate, High Leverage Leadership for Today's World. This video segment is on our operating principle, Declare There's Nothing Wrong or Broken Here and Now. So for this operating principle, I'd like to give you an insight that we often use words, terms, phraseology, uh, ways of speaking to evoke or provoke new ways of thinking and speaking and acting. So by saying this opera, by using this operating principle, declare there's nothing wrong or broken here and now, we're not I indicating some new adoption of some new moral code or the lack of it or that it even has universal application. What we're saying is it's an alternative way, an alternative mindset or perspective to view your situation and to create new solutions from, new alternative strategies and solutions. This is a tough one. Many of our clients have a tough time with this one at first. What their reaction to it is often, uh, we can even see it. What? Declare there's nothing wrong? Of course there's things that are wrong. And so hang with this one. Hang with it, hang through it, and learn to practice it. Because our clients have said, although it's the toughest one they may have had to incorporate at first, that it is one that has given them sometimes the most value in the shift of their mindset from judging listener and judging mindset to a mind frame of a learner mindset. So, in this operating principle, there are three key ideas to explore. One is in the word declare, one is in the word wrong, and one is in the concept of presence that we are pointing to when we use the terms, the words here and now in the operating principle. So let's chunk it out and talk about each one of those. So for the word declare, we're talking about something that the definition of the word declare in our way of thinking is it's a formal announcement at the beginning of a state or a condition. So the formal announcement at the beginning of a state or a condition. So for me to declare or have a declaration, and this is internal, I don't suggest that you go around telling people, do you know there's nothing wrong or broken? You probably might get uh, a little white jacket with long arms for that one. And so with this idea of declaring to myself as a way of brain priming, as a way of setting me up, a formal announcement at the beginning of this state of shifting from judging to learner. So a declaration in general is a creative act in language. It creates our world. It, minute by minute, we create our world with our declarations. One of the most famous declarations that all, all of you probably know about is the Declaration of Independence, written long ago, a couple hundred plus years ago, by a group of people who had a vision for a future for the United States of America that was different than the way that it was that day when they wrote it. So the Declaration of Independence starts with, we declare these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and, and, and endowed with inalienable rights of life, health, and the pursuit of happiness. So with that declaration has created a huge context in which is still unfolding today in our country. We're still living into that declaration. And it certainly wasn't a historical report on the way that it was when they wrote it. So declarations are statements that are not necessarily based on historical evidence, and maybe there's little to no indication of, of any kind that it may even be possible. So it's a declaration, a mindset, it's a way that I set up my frame of thinking. So they create context. So think about if a declaration creates a context. When I use the word wrong, that's wrong, it's wrong, you're wrong, I'm creating a context for myself. And I'm creating a context for others. So first the context gets created in my brain, the brain priming of wrong, kind of the judgment, that track. And then when I use those words out loud, it creates a context for others that generally gets a reaction of defense. And so what is my intention when I'm in a situation that I use the terminology wrong, either to myself or to others? Am I faced with a situation that looks like it doesn't match what I intended? Do I have a vision, a goal, or an objective, what we call our yonder star? And here we are, here's where we need it to be, and there's a gap? And so what would be much more useful is for us to understand that the word wrong as a label, so shifting from the word declare to what's wrong with wrong, when we use the word wrong as a label, it's really not very definitive. It doesn't tell us much. 
It's a judgment declaration. It's a label um, that it encompass. It would be much better if we could use our words more specifically. So rather than say that part was made wrong by a quality engineer to someone on the production floor, what kind of a reaction do you think you're going to get from that? Versus this part is out of spec. It's due to be 0 .005 millimeters and it's 0 .007. What do you think happened? How can, we, how can we shift or change that? What do we need to do? How can we change our process? You know, what insight do you have about this? Totally different way of approaching it that gives the person who's in the interaction a way to respond versus to react with defensiveness. So wrong, using the word wrong as a label now when I'm speaking it out loud just is not very explicit or specific, not that helpful. It signals judgment. It may even signal blame, but it doesn't really provide a context for problem solving. So, what's wrong with wrong? Well, for myself, I just mentioned about what happens when I use that word out loud. For myself, when I'm in a wrong-based wrong, a, a wrong mindset, it's a brain priming that sets me up to have limited ways of looking at things. Marilee Adams, who wrote a book called Change Your Questions, Change Your Life, talks about moving from the judger path to the learner path. And so really for me, it, this principle is a lot about how fast can I switch from my judgment, my worry, my concern, my reaction that something's wrong into, okay, that's what we're dealing with, what's next? My ability to move through that space much more quickly helps me and helps others become much more effective. So our premise in our book, one of our premises is that we're dealing with an accelerated pace of change and increased complexity of the problems and issues that we're facing. So our way of thinking has to shift. Our mental models, our way of interacting with our world, with problems, with solutions, with um, opportunities, with other people, has to shift to keep up. And so this operating principle, declare there's nothing wrong or broken here and now, helps us shift that mental model. So the third, the third concept in this operating principle, we talked about the word declare, we talked about the word wrong and what happens when we use that in our own brain and with others. The third concept in this operating principle is the idea of presence, which is exemplified in the words here and now that are tagged on to the end of this operating principle. So for in order for us to be effective and to move things forward with velocity, it's helpful for us to be in the present moment. So when we dig into our past-based file cabinet, it, where there's, um, you know, in the past there's nothing is wrong that can be fixed or done about that in the past, and if we want anything to change in the future, the current moment is where we can take the action. There's a Chinese proverb that says, if you want to know about your past, look at your present condition. If you want to know about your future, look at your present actions. So we want to be in action in the present moment towards the solution, towards closing the gap between what our intention was and what we ended up with. We want to define the gap and close the gap as, as, with as much velocity and effectiveness and connectedness as possible. So using this operating principle, declare there's nothing wrong or broken here and now, is a way for me to shift from judging mentality into learning mentality for me to accelerate or add velocity to moving from what to okay, what's next? Okay, now what? Now how do we deal with that solution? Rather than dwelling in and causing lots of emotional wake around me, lots of plugged in survival brains, lots of blame, lots of people going to CYA, um, I actually can have people more engaged in the moment like okay, now what next? And I assert that peep individuals, leaders, individuals, managers, um, teams that can learn to shift from this judging to learning mindset to this is what we were going for, here's where we ended up, here's the gap, what's next? Okay, here's what we're going for, here's what we ended up. Where's the gap, what's next? Groups and individuals that can shift their operating system mindset into that mode will be much more productive. Um, the other thing, the last thing that I want to say about this operating principle, declare there's nothing wrong or broken here and now, is, is something that I actually recommend about all the operating principles. Don't use these on other people. Use them on yourself. So I want to shift my mindset from judger to learner. And certainly it's not something to be used in a defensive mode, as in, remember, there's nothing wrong or broken here. 
is a way for me to distance myself from accountability or responsibility or engagement with what actually happened. So don't use this on other people. Use it on myself as a way to shift my mindset. And then see how much more productivity is around you. How much can you move through the issues that you face? How much more quickly can you move through and effectively can you move through the issues you face? So self-awareness, where am I shifted into this wrong mindset? I often find that when I um, have my internal dialogue or internal voice saying, that's wrong, or I disagree, or how could that have happened? So learn to be able to self become self-aware and self-intervene. What are the things I'm saying to myself that I know that I'm in that judge or mindset? Or what are the things coming out of my mouth that give me a clue into what's happening into my brain priming, the way I prime my thoughts in my brain? Shift into this new mental mind frame. Okay, what actually are we dealing with here? What are the facts? What's the situation? What were we going for? What did we get? What's the gap? Those are all the, the you know, from the old dragnet television program, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. What is the situation? What were we going for? What's the gap? What's next? So, good luck on practicing this one. Put it in place wherever you can see that you go into judger mentality. The, the, a key component is to shift into learner mentality. A great story and example for you with, for one of my executive coaching clients was relating to me from her past life when she was a property inspection, property site inspector in a property management firm. Her job was to go around the country to the different sites that they owned. There were rental, um, residential re rental properties to go around to these different apartment buildings and other communities and do site inspections, both in the physical dimension, safety dimension, you know, just a number of checklist things was her way of doing these site inspections. Mostly what she found, her job got into finding the things that were wrong and giving the management and the group of people there a checklist of what they needed to fix. So you can think of over time how her mindset developed into this criticism, you know, this critical thinking, critical looking, so she became very skilled in that, but also she also was only looking for what was wrong or broken or not working correctly. And when she delivered that communication, the property managers were, you know, they were just mortified when she would be coming to their property and mortified to hear what she would have to say about it because it was some long list of what they'd done wrong. So out of her own dissatisfaction of sort of living in this model of being hypercritical and, and uh, you know, not really spreading the love everywhere she went, she decided to shift her own mindset into what if I approached my job as a, as, as a person who spreads best practices, who identifies and spreads best practices. So she shifted her mindset that way. Can you see how that's shifting from judging and critical to learner? She still had her checklist. She still looked at things and said, but the way she approached it was, I'm here to share best practices. What is it that you're doing that really was working? What is it that you're doing that's just really not working? I've got some things to share with you from other properties. So there's some things that we know from the industry that are best practices. So let's share that together. To make a long story short, the way she shifted her own mindset and her approach about her job gave her a whole lot more satisfaction and she became more effective. Because the people on the receiving end tended to be interested in her visits. It's like, what is she bringing from other parts of the country? What are other people doing? And they would start bringing out things they've been struggling with. We've really been struggling with how to keep this part clear and clean and organized. Do you have any suggestions about that? So that's a practical example in the real world of how she shifted from judging mindset to learning mindset, did her job even more effectively, and had lots more collaboration. So go out in the world and practice and accelerate your leadership.